everybody, my name is Luke Mar, and this is Hot Mode. And today on Hot Mode, we are going to be doing a roast of Kylie Jenner and the fact that she has a billion dollars but not a scent of style. But before we get into the actual video, if you guys are looking for a channel that talks about fashion in the most fun, sassy, bitchy, analytical way, this is it. So you can go down below, hit the subscribe button, and turn on my post notifications. Like, what do you have to lose? You're literally here already. And if you guys want to see more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at hotlamode. I post some pretty poppin' fashion memes, and my Instagram stories are always lit. We're spilling the tea always. It's great. We have a good time. And also, if you guys like this Jean-Paul Gaultier jacket, you definitely can find it on my Instagram or in the link down below, so check it out. So now let's get into this whole Kylie Jenner style roast situation. The reason I wanted to talk about Kylie is because she is like a billionaire now, or she's like close to being a billionaire. She's like $900 million. People are like trying to give her money, and I'm like, you're an idiot. But I'll be honest, I haven't really read any of the articles because I like my brain cells and I want them to stay in my head as long as possible. But even with close to a billion dollars, Kylie Jenner literally has never turned a look, a fashion look, like an outfit that I've been like, wow, okay, this is like signature Kylie. But give me a fashion moment, like a billion dollars, you can shop at any single brand that you want and you're turning out these boring ass looks, look after look. Kylie, how many Met Galas have you been to? And I have yet to see an actual good look. And I get that like makeup and the hair, like that's your ish. You have to have something that like complements what's going on up here with everything going on down here, you know? Like I need to see something interesting, well thought out, maybe like a bit out there and edgy. I don't know, just give me something that's not like this Coachella mess that I keep getting on repeat always. I mean, you can shop at literally any store, like you're a billionaire, you're on the cover of Forbes. You can shop at any store, any designer, anyone. Even better, you can get any single brand to send you whatever you want, like Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Dior, they could send it all to you. And we're still doing this shit. So we need to fix that. I have a really great quote by one of my favorite orators, the Countess Luanne de Lesseps, and she said, Elegance is learned, my friends. Kylie Jenner, we're gonna learn you some fucking fashion elegance, okay? So the first look we're gonna be talking about is this red fringe dress from her Travis Scott and Kylie Jenner GQ photo shoot. The dress is Norma Kamali, and like we love Norma Kamali, but like Kylie Jenner, Norma Kamali, that's not the collab we were looking for. So I see this fringe, and I see that Kylie Jenner is actually showing some sort of emotion, and I think, wow, this is like a flapper from the 1920s, except it's the worst flapper I've ever seen in my entire life. The style revolutionaries of the 1920s, the women, the early feminist suffragettes, are literally rolling in their graves because Kylie Jenner has ruined the flapper dress for everybody involved. And also Travis Scott, I know this isn't about you, but I just want to say that, that Tom Ford full look is very men's warehouse. It just looks cheap. I feel like you're on the dais of a sweet 16. Like, I don't really know what to say to make this better. Hopefully you don't wear this normally. So next up is this black leather halter dress that Kylie wore out and about. So this black leather halter dress is by the brand Jetroy, Jetroy, I don't really know. All I really do know is that I looked it up and it's literally watered down Balmain at like four times the price. And Belmont is expensive. Like, did you see those sequin Beyonce fucking sweatshirts? They were expensive as fuck. Not only is it expensive as fuck, it's also basic as fuck. It's like Zara, but on crack. And normally I respect a brand's prices because there's some sort of innovation, there's a vision from the creative director, but there's a lack of innovation and the prices are fucking redonkulous. So I need somebody to explain to me what is happening here. The dress fits her really beautifully though, except for around the breast, like the under boob area looks a bit big. It looks like it's falling down. It doesn't fit you correctly, like that, that's not, no. Like you paid $2,000 for it and it doesn't fit you fucking immaculate? Mmm, problem. I don't think so, you need to reassess. 
The vintage Chanel little purse is very cute. It's not like the basic Chanel flap bag situation. And it plays into the whole like tiny bag trend thing. So I'm not gonna be mad about it. But we have to talk about Stassi Baby. I feel like an asshole for saying that name out loud. Girl, you're basic. The dress looks like the Jacquemus men's collection. And if you don't know what the Jacquemus men's collection is, I'm just gonna let you know now, it's not good. And also the Saint Laurent bag, like, girl, really, it is not 2013 anymore. But luckily somebody agreed with me about the bag because by the second photo that Saint Laurent bag was out of the pictures. I love that. I was like, yes, whoever creative directed this, you have, you have my admiration. All in all, Kylie, there are much better brands to be getting little black dresses from. Jacquemus, Givenchy, Proenza School, or Mugler. But no, you chose Jitroy, Jitra, Jitra, I don't know how to say it. Honey, that was a bad investment. The third look is this Fendi two-piece. So it's the Vintage Fendi logo, and if you haven't seen my video about my thoughts about the Vintage Fendi logo, I'll give you a quick synopsis. It's a stupid fucking logo trend that really only impresses hype beast Instagram thoughts, so I don't care about it whatsoever. I do respect that the two-piece is vintage because it makes it a little bit more genuine, and it's like actually, from a time where the Fendi logo was being utilized in a way that isn't obviously just to fucking make money off of stupid people that buy shit off Instagram. But like, does it have to be that key lime fucking green? And does it have to look like a 99 cent store rag? But besides the fact that it looks like a fucking dish rag, um, I'll deal with it. The next look is definitely an older look from Kylie, but it's one that still haunts me to this day. So she's wearing these Alexander Wang Fall 2018 leggings. Let me just say that the design of those leggings is awful. But I do think that the leggings fit her really, really well. If you look at the side by side of the model and Kylie, the models look very baggy and not in a good way. Kylie's like fit her beautifully. I really appreciate that. But the seams keep making me think she looks like a weird ass dysfunctional prototype Barbie and it's throwing me off and I really don't want to have to deal with it. But then she had the fucking audacity to get rid of the best part of the look. The off the shoulder top. That off the shoulder top was fucking legendary. I understand if the fur was too much for Kylie or she's like a vegan or something. I mean, I personally would never get rid of the fur trim on an off-the-shoulder top if I could wear an off-the-shoulder top. But if you take off the fucking fur, that top is still major. Like, it's amazing. I love it. It, like, cups the boobs in a beautiful way. It's off the shoulder. It has these, like, long sleeves. It's very chic. It's great. It was the only look from that Alexander Wang show that I thought was semi-decent. But Kylie had to replace it with this Hanes guinea tea ass fucking tank top. And I'm sure somebody's gonna be like, oh my God, well, her boobs are so big, like, she needs support. Okay, you know what? I think that, that Alexander Wang top could support her boobs. The next look is actually the look from her Louis Vuitton men's fashion show debut. She didn't walk in the show, but she was there. So the look was a mess, like messy as fuck. Now it must have been custom, which makes it even worse because somebody actually had to make that look specifically for Kylie. I don't know if I should blame Kylie fully because it could be Virgil Abloh's fault. It also could be Louis Vuitton's fault. They have 115 billion more dollars than Kylie does and they still put out this trash. So you know what, maybe it's not all Kylie's fault. The tracksuit is baggy and not in like a cute boyfriend jean kind of baggy way. Honestly, it's like the Michelin man did a load of laundry and forgot that he had this neon highlighter in his pocket and the laundry came out all fucking yellow like that. And I know that there were neon looks in the Louis Vuitton men's show, but like did Kylie's look have to be as bad as the neon shit? Like, did it just have to look ugly? Was that like mandated? Was that the trend? My thing is, Kylie is a curvy girl. I'd even go as far as to say that she is like a knockoff Kim, but wearing a baggy ass tracksuit like this is not gonna do her any favors. The fabric didn't allow for her natural curves to come through in any sort of way, and it just made her look bigger than she actually is. It's not that I care that she looks bigger, it's just that if you have a billion dollars, don't you think you'd have somebody that like was making clothes that fit you beautifully and impeccably? What do I know? I just read a lot about haute couture. I've never been invited to Paris to do three fittings from a beautiful $100,000 Chanel fucking suit. So you know what? I might just be an idiot, but 
Just saying. Also, though, Jordan Woods was there. You know, can't forget Jordan Woods. My favorite character in uh, Keeping Up With Kylie or whatever show that is. She looks a bit disheveled, I'm gonna be honest. But I'm also gonna say that Jordan Woods is very relatable and I feel like if I was in like the Parisian heat, I would look like a hot ass fucking mess too. And I'm not even saying like, I think I would, I know I would. I just really can't help but think that she looks like she's going to a yoga class rather than a Louis Vuitton fashion show. I mean, if Louis Vuitton is gonna do like a Lululemon collab, I get it. The next look, Kylie wore this two-piece pink tracksuit-esque moment. Moment is very kind of me to say. I would just say that it was an outfit that she wore out in the world. Kylie very obviously wants to let everybody know that Millennial Pink, Tumblr Pink, and Glossier Pink are still in style. At least in her mind, they are. The pants are by a designer named Michael Ingo. He creates a lot of different streetwear inspired pieces for celebrities like Nicki Minaj, Ciara, Bretman Rock. I see him more of like a costume designer than a fashion designer, but that's just me. I mean, can't find a shit on Vogue at all, anywhere, so interesting. But the top is from a Korean brand named Flea Madonna. I wonder how they came up with that name. And they sell at places like Urban Outfitters, an opening ceremony here in the States. Urban Outfitters for a billionaire is questionable, not because billionaires shouldn't be allowed to shop in Urban Outfitters, but Urban Outfitters, from what I understand, is not the most ethical company. And I personally, with a billion dollars, would try to be as ethical with my money as possible. The sneakers are Gucci. They look like they're from the fall 2018 show. The gigantic jewels that were on the runway and on the shoe are removable. Kylie, it seems, decided that she was gonna remove the gigantic tacky jewels from the shoe. I, on the other hand, would not have done that because the only part of the shoe that I think is actually worthy is the gigantic removable tacky jewelry. Now they just look like they're ugly, boring hiking shoes that she paid way too much for. The finale of this look is the $21,000 baby pink Hermes Birkin. My answer to this is no. Birkins are boring, Birkins are pretentious, and Birkins prove that you do not know anything about fashion whatsoever. I get wanting to spend a lot of money on something that you like, but Birkins have been tainted by rich assholes who just wanna display their wealth for other people, which goes against the idea of buying something because you actually think it's cool. Mind you, I've never seen a light pink one like this, and the Kardashians do have a pretty hallowed Birkin history. Kanye left North paint on a fucking Birkin, and honestly, I don't really know if I'm outraged or just like, in awe, I just really don't. So I'm not terribly mad at Kylie's Birkin, but for everybody else that aspires to have a Birkin, I discourage it a lot. Because when I see a Birkin, I think, oh, that woman's name is Serafina, and she loves to talk about how she doesn't associate with poor people. So you could just return the Birkin and use those $20,000 to buy things that actually have taste and style and context and interest instead of a fucking ridiculously expensive piece of leather that has no real interesting design concept whatsoever. The piece de resistance is Kylie's billion dollar Forbes cover. We both know that Kylie is not self-made because one of her parents is a famous fucking Olympian. But if you wanna enjoy a woman who is self-made and whose company is actually estimated to be worth a billion dollars, let me introduce you to the i fucking conic Pat McGrath. I feel like she probably makes better lip shit too, so just get on the Pat McGrath train. We're already here. But talking about the cover and what she's actually wearing, it's an off-white blazer, which I actually think would have looked really beautiful on her because it looks like it was made to fit a curvier woman and accentuate the waist and be beautiful. But of course, I don't get to see any of the fucking blazer. I just get to see her face. Cause why couldn't we show me the fucking blazer? What's, what's the problem? What's up? Why can't I have one moment where I'm like, oh God, this looks so great on her. I love this. No, you have to ruin it for me and you just have to show me her face. That's it, that's all I get. And a shoulder, I get a big old shoulder. That's rude, that's offensive. Honestly, I'm just looking for one thing and you refuse to give it to me, Kylie Jenner and Kylie Jenner's styling team and Kylie Jenner's management and media publications that talk or feature or even think about Kylie Jenner. So I blame all of you, everybody involved. It's everybody's fault. 
Anyways, my real thoughts on the cover are that whenever I see Kylie Jenner's face, I just think of that paper magazine cover that she did. And that's the end of the video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know if you guys liked any of Kylie's looks. And if you did, I recommend Googling a therapist in your area. So I will see you guys in the next video. It's coming out on Thursday. Thank you so much for watching and TTYL.